We head now to Washington, where lawmakers are preparing for another busy week of public hearings in the impeachment inquiry. This time, eight witnesses are currently scheduled to testify in an open setting starting tomorrow morning, and this will go on until Thursday. The list includes three officials who listened to President Trump's July 25th call with Ukraine's leader, as well as the U.S. ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, who Democrats view as a crucial witness in their investigation. CBS News chief congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes has more from Capitol Hill. I think truth has had a good week. Democrats are predicting another good well, week in American Washington as Republicans yeah, downplay the right. evidence gathered so far. Uh, shouldn't it be based on something that actually happened versus one person's opinion of a third-hand conversation? But in testimony Friday, diplomatic aide David Holmes told lawmakers he was with U.S. Ambassador to the EU Gordon Sondland when Sondland called the president. Holmes says he could hear President Trump say, so he's going to do the investigation? Ambassador Sondland replied that the Ukrainian president would do anything you ask him to. Holmes said Sondland added that Mr. Trump only cares about big stuff that benefits the president, like the Biden investigation that Mr. Giuliani was pushing. The president uh, had no interest in the defense of the Ukraine. He had one thing in mind. He wanted to shake down President Zelensky. Over the weekend, White House budget official Mark Sandy reportedly told lawmakers in private testimony that the president's decision to freeze aid to Ukraine this summer was highly irregular and that he could never get an explanation for it. Wisconsin Republican Ron Johnson argued it would have been better if sure none of this had sure been exposed. That funding would have been restored and our relationship with Ukraine would be far better off than it is today. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said there's one witness who could clear things up. The president could come right before the committee and talk, speak all the truth that he wants if he you wants, to, if he wants to take the oath of office, or he could do it in writing. He has every opportunity uh, to present his case. All right, so Nancy Cordes is joining us now from Capitol Hill. She's the CBS News chief congressional correspondent. Nancy, I'm trying very quickly to pull up uh, President Trump's latest tweet because he uh, basically says he, it's something, there you go. Uh, he, he, he suggests that uh, testifying is something that he may consider while he, you know, also sort of name calls and, and uh, <laughs> what did he call face the nation? Deface the Deface nation. Deface the nation. Um, I don't know uh, whether or not we should, uh, how much weight we should put into that tweet, but um, let us start with House Speaker Nancy uh, Pelosi. Uh, we just heard that some of, some of the interview with Margaret Brennan, uh, the president uh, tweeted that he likes the idea, as you just heard. So do we get a sense of just where the uh, Democratic leadership stands on the hearing so far? Look, if the president wants to come and testify before the House Intelligence Committee, I'm sure Democrats would welcome that. Uh, but keep in mind, this is a president who often flirted with the idea of testifying in person uh, with the Mueller investigation, and then in the end he didn't. He submitted answers in writing, and he's not even compelled to do that in this situation if he doesn't want to. So I wouldn't hold my breath for it, uh, but I will say that I think Democrats have a lot of questions they'd like to ask the president if given the opportunity. As for where they're going to go with this investigation once this week of public hearings is over, you know, while you heard Pelosi in that interview say that she's keeping an open mind, they haven't made any decisions yet, she did come out last week and accuse the president of the United States of bribery. And so when you've got the Speaker of the House saying flat out that she thinks that the president is guilty of bribery, then the likelihood that she will move ahead with articles of impeachment seems pretty high. And that's certainly the indication that we're getting from all the key Democrats here on Capitol Hill. Hmm. Uh, it reminded me of Peter Welch of Vermont when in, he got into a little bit of an exchange with Jim Jordan of Ohio last week. Nancy, you recall, obviously, where he said, you know, we can get the president of the United States right here. That right. would be great. Sure. Uh, all right. So the, several witnesses have also, Nancy, as you know, noted the role of U.S. Ambassador to the EU Gordon Sondland in their testimonies. And in a new report, the Wall Street Journal has reviewed emails from Sondland showing that he kept officials such as acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney and Energy Secretary Rick Perry up to date on efforts to get Ukraine to investigate the president's political opponents. They call themselves the Three Amigos. Sondland is scheduled to testify on Wednesday. Uh, what are lawmakers going to press him on? 
Well, they're going to press him on a number of inconsistencies in his earlier closed door deposition because since he testified, a raft of witnesses have basically said that he was the linchpin. He was the one that was most directly urging these Ukrainian officials to announce the investigations that the president wanted, and that is something that he completely downplayed in his original deposition. Yes, he issued that three page correction. Yes, he did say that, you know, on one particular occasion, his mind has now been jogged, his memory uh, now refreshed based on what all the other witnesses have said. And yes, he did um, deliver that message to Ukrainian officials that they needed to announce investigations uh, in order for the president to resume military aid. But there are a lot of other instances that witnesses have relayed in their testimony. So he's going to be asked about that. And he's going to be asked most specifically about about how often he talked to the president, what it is exactly that the president told him to do. Because one of the key arguments Republicans and the White House have been making is, well, none of this leads directly back to the president. We can't know what it is that he wanted. Maybe these individuals were freelancing. But, you know, based on all the evidence, Gordon Sondland was not necessarily freelancing. He was talking to the president. He was keeping the president's acting chief of staff apprised of his activities. And so that's what Democrats are going to try to uncover in his public hearing on Wednesday. That will be must-see TV. I should point out, Nancy, the three amigos uh, doesn't include Mick Mulvaney. It actually includes Kurt Volker. But uh, right. you get the point that I was trying to make there. The, the, the and, one, go ahead, Nancy. And he's testifying tomorrow, and that will also be interesting because Volker is another one who has really downplayed his understanding of this quid pro quo. He said he didn't really even know until very late in the process that that the president even wanted these investigations into um, this uh, Ukrainian energy firm that had had employed the former Vice President Joe Biden's son. Uh, you know, and again, other witnesses have completely contradicted that. So Volker will be in the hot seat to some extent tomorrow as well. Nancy, could, could Congress, um, are you hearing from sources on the Hill there that they may try to nail Gordon Sunland on not mentioning that phone call that David Holmes, who testified behind closed doors, heard? In other words, lying by omission, is that something that they're looking at? They're definitely going to ask him about that. They're going to ask him uh, not just about this phone call, but you know, Tim Morrison, another one of these witnesses who is the top president's top Russia aide in the White House. His testimony from his behind from his closed door deposition was released over the weekend. He's testifying in person tomorrow. He said, you know, that he kept talking to Sondland, who told him, oh, I talked to the president this time. I talked to the president that time. The president's earlier, easier for me to reach than it is for me to reach you. And um, Barr and said he was really sort of amazed by this, that this one ambassador seemed to have such a direct line to the president. But every time he checked and kind of went back to the source, he discovered that, yes, Sondland had talked to the president. Um, he said it was more than a few times, perhaps as, perhaps as many times as half a dozen. That's quite unusual that a, an ambassador would have that kind of access to the president. But Tim Morrison, who was in a position to know, who was running his facts down, said that, indeed, it uh, you you know, as far as he understood, Sondland was communicating on a very regular basis about all this with the president, and Morrison said that that's something that concerned him a great deal. So it seems to me that this upcoming week, when it comes to testimony, will definitely be the most interesting one because you have people who had more direct contact with the president, at least with Sondland, and then kind mm -hmm. of people w within his circle. So how are Republicans preparing for this week of public hearings? Well, I think you'll hear from them sort of the same case that they've been making all along, which is that some of these individuals got their information second and third hand, um, that these are disgruntled bureaucrats who uh, who just were upset with the president's policy direction. The problem is that a lot of these individuals were uh, either handpicked or appointed by the president himself. Tim Morrison was very loyal to this president. Jennifer Williams, who um, whose transcript was also released over the Weekend, who's also testifying uh, tomorrow, she was chosen to come over from the State Department to serve as an advisor to Vice President Mike Pence. So these are not necessarily, uh, you know, deep state disgruntled bureaucrats who had an ax to grind. In a lot of cases, these are individuals who were um, who were very dedicated to to the president. And you know, the reality is that at this point, you've got diplomats overseas, officials 
officials at the State Department, officials at the National Security Council who are still there or who have recently left, all saying the same thing. These are not people who are coordinating their testimony. These are not people who come from one particular background or one particular political persuasion. Um, and yet their stories are remarkably consistent uh, all the way across the board. So it's getting more and more difficult for Republicans to argue that somehow these are just people with an ax to grind who are getting their information second and third hand. Mm. And Nancy, of course, as all of this impeachment talk and inquiry goes on, there is a government shutdown looming. So what are lawmakers on both sides of the aisle planning for a spending package? And is it likely they'll be able to reach a deal with the White House? You know, there is no stomach here on Capitol Hill, Hill for a shutdown at this time of year. Um, Democrats and Republicans alike say that they're going to work to avoid it. Uh, the big wild card here, of course, is the president. Could he get a bee in his bonnet, decide he's not going to sign it because he's upset about what's playing out here on Capitol Hill as far as his own impeachment is concerned? So that that is, you know, something that is of, of some trepidation for, for leaders here on Capitol Hill. But uh, we aren't anticipating a massive massive clash between the two sides that would drive a government shutdown. Uh, I realize that those are famous last words, but a a as of right now, you know, we aren't we don't see the ingredients for one of those sort of epic showdowns that leads to a shutdown of government. Well, I'm sure the That's folks good. who thought uh, they were going to get that anti vaping ban passed today thought the very same thing. <laughs> and you exactly never know. Right. You never know. Never change. Uh, Nancy Cordes, thank you very much. You're welcome. So you can watch live coverage of all of this week's hearings starting tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. There'll also be a special uh, live editions of Red and Blue on Tuesday and Wednesday at 9 p.m.